Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I am going to use this and this and transform it into this and this. So if you like what you see and you want to be inspired, keep watching and let's turn some trash into treasure. Okay, so I have a box from two satin pillows that I purchased and it looks like that inside and perfect for a little home for a journal. And then I have this cereal box or bar, it was some sort of a bar. And this is going to be perfect. It actually fits perfectly inside the box. I might have to trim it down just a little bit and that's it. So this is going to be a journal. I'm going to pop that aside for now and I'm going to work on the box. I don't have to do much here. All I'm planning to do is cover the front panel, cover here, perhaps uh, do something on the inside. I want to add a little ribbon and then cover the back as well. So I'm going to start off with peeling off this sticker. And what a perfect little box. Look at that. It has this gold handle. This is the only reason really why I kept this box, but any box will do. Uh, for this type of thing which is why I'm filming this video because you can turn any box into something special. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do is start covering any writing or brand names and stuff like that so I have prepared some pieces here just cut down some scrapbook paper it goes quite nice with that blue color and I'm going to do the back first get it over and done with so all I'm going to do you can see I've already trimmed it down so anyway that's going to be glued down so off I go and I really want to get those edges perfect that's the back done it's already looking nice now I'm going to do the inside panel Okay, that's the inside panel. Now I'm going to do this section here. All right, first I'm going to add some ribbon. I'm not entirely sure how to do this, so I'm going to work it out as I go. I'm going to glue this ribbon down here on the bottom. I'm just trying to work out how to do this, and I didn't even mention the reason why I want the ribbon is I'll show you what I want to do. I got the idea from this other thing that I have. It's quite a deep box. And you can't, there's no way to put your hands to pull the whole thing out. So then you just pull the ribbon and get the thing, right? So this is what I want to do. All right, I worked it out. So the ribbon has to go here, somewhere in the center, go all the way to the edge here. Maybe I'll add some masking tape as extra something to hold it in place. It can't hurt, so there we have it. And now I'm going to cover the whole thing. All right, that's looking really, really nice. Look at that. We're going to trim this ribbon. So that's going to sit like that. The journal goes on top and then we have this little bit of ribbon. So anyway, I'm going to trim off a, a bit longer than I need and then I can do something with that later. All right, the ribbon will go in there just for now. And now the most important part, the top of the box. Actually, the journal really is the most important part. We'll do that next. I'm using the exactly same panel for my front over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. All right, that's done. So basically at this stage, the whole box is covered. Everything is covered. All the writing, all the brand names, like nothing's visible. And now the next thing I'm going to do is decorate the front. I'm going to use this gold piece. Look at that. It looks like a mirror, but it actually looks a lot more like a mirror in the video. Ooh, and there's my phone. And there are my eyebrows. So this is actually just cardstock in case if you're wondering. Gold cardstock. And of course it's too reflective, uh, so I'm going to cover it. I'm going to pop this piece on and then this piece. This is my plan anyway. Plans change, who knows. And then maybe that. And then I'm just going to do something like this, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. These are all die cuts, by the way, from that same Christmas. It was a Christmas gold cardstock. And of course, I planned ahead, kind of 
what I want to do so that this video isn't three hours long. All right, and I know you want to know about these corners. They look like actual metal corners, but they're not. They're that same cardstock. See, just cardstock. It looks way cooler in the video than it does in real life, actually. Usually it's the other way around. Things look way cooler in real life than in the video. All right, and this is what those corners are. Uh, they're little, they're photo corners. And I don't buy anything really brand new. Like I buy all of my stuff from Facebook Marketplace and these people that are these stashing and all that sort of stuff. So I have no idea how old this is, but basically there you have it. They are photo, photo corners. And the annoying thing is that you have for each one, you have to do the Sizzix, you have to run it through the machine, then you have to take it out, then you have to pop it onto a new spot, run it through the machine again. So it's quite a long process if you want a lot of them but it's so worth it. So this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and glue all of this down off camera. But what I'm planning to do with these pieces is have foam in between. So it's like it creates a 3D effect. Even my Sizzix machine, the die cutting machine, I also got that secondhand on Facebook a couple of years ago, a uh, Facebook marketplace it was. And I think I paid 50 bucks for it, Australian. I mean, I don't even know how much they go for now, but... And then I got all, all these dies actually came with the machines, so I don't know what they're called. All right, side note, and that's only because I get comments like this. People say, oh, I don't have that, all the special stuff that you have. And I realize a lot of people might not have this gold paper, right, or gold cardstock, which just looks absolutely amazing. I got it at Kmart last year, last Christmas, and I was hoarding it all this time. So anyway, what I wanted to say is you don't have to have all the things. And here's an example. This is a, just a little box, nothing special. And all this is at the front is a piece of scrapbook paper, another piece of scrapbook paper, and an image. And it's quite special and you can do so many things with this. So many other things. So this is just an example. One of the very first videos I did I think I did a video on that. I used this box or these boxes, I have a few, and I made little journals that live inside here and decorated the front. If I do have that video, I'm going to link it in the description or wherever so you can get ideas on what you can do on the cover. Let's keep going. And that's what we have so far. Oh, how cool does that look? Things are not turning out as uh, well as I wanted to, but it's getting there. I did the 3D thing by putting foam tape underneath. You know, I actually don't like that at all. So I'm just going to glue them down flat. Just get rid of all of this. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. It's very reflective. All right, so that's that part done. I'm just thinking I want to do something here as well. So I'm going to use perhaps, I just want to see how it's going to look if I do this. It looks like actual metal, gold metal corner protectors, doesn't it? It's such a good look. All right, that's the box done. That is the box complete. Next, it's journal time. So all I'm going to do, oh, so simple. I'm going to find where the box was glued shut right there, and I'm gonna open it. Now I'm going to get rid of all of these outside flap bits. I might actually use my ruler for precision and my X-Acto knife for blade so I can get nice clean cuts. All right, and here we have it all cut down and fits perfectly. And we have all this space here, so I'm just gonna do something fun in there. First thing I'm going to do is just give that spine a little bit of reinforcement and also well I'm applying masking tape and you'll see why in a minute well it's mainly for reinforcement mainly but that's not the only reason why so next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of paint not all over I'm just thinking ahead so what I'm going to do is cover this cereal box but the spine is going to be visible just these ridges here these the fold they're going to be visible so i'm just going to add a little bit of this blue paint and you know while i'm at it i'm going to add a little bit of blue paint on the edges here mainly like this red bit is going to be visible a little bit so i'm just going to mute it down it doesn't have to be fully 
covered but just mute it down and I also don't want any paint on the other side which is why I'm holding it in my hand rather than painting like this and then it can move and get paint on the other side. Alright I've gone all around the edges and the paint is dry and you can see this thread is kind of showing a bit more so I'm just going to do a little bit more. Alright next thing I'm going to do is this. I have already trimmed down a couple of pieces so we're not wasting time and this is what it's going to look like. It would actually be really quite nice to go in with a little bit of sewing but I'm keeping it simple today and I'm actually going to skip the sewing and I know if you know me you're probably I don't know what you probably nothing actually I was gonna say you're probably like shocked that I'm not gonna do sewing but I doubt that you're having any such strong emotions stop talking Natasha all right here is what we have and this is what I was talking about you see how a little sliver of that cover is visible here that's why we painted it blue well I painted it blue and same here you can see the red barely visible it was right there and it's just just needed a little bit of muting down if I didn't do anything it will be quite visible all right so there's the cover now next step totally optional I'm not even sure myself if I'm gonna do it but you could cover the inside with some paper some scrapbook paper I originally cut those pieces down for the front for this and then I didn't like the pink so I might as well use them I wasn't actually planning to do anything here on the inside which is why I was being careful with the paint okay so everything's still wet but that's looking really really good there's the cover done well it's not done actually I need to decorate the front so here's what I'm going to do for the front again that gold piece but this one's embossed look at that all right that's glued down next I'm going to add this piece next I'm going to add another gold piece it's looking really good so far and next I'm going to put this piece on I mean it doesn't really go it's black but I had it in my stash and it's actually perfect size it must be used look at that it's perfect size next I'm going to again add these corners on corners done so since we have a key on the box I thought a keyhole might look cool on the journal and this is what that looks like very gold isn't it what do we think very rich and of course the next thing we need to do is prepare the signature or signatures I reckon for this spine one and a half inch spine I am going to do two signatures three signatures would work four signatures would work it just depends how many pages you have per signature I'm just going to do two signatures and I'll be right back all right here's what we have I'll just show you what I've done so far of course I'm going with the gold theme here so I use this gold trim that I have I only have a tiny little bit left so I applied it to some of the pages and then in there I've also got these album pages from an old photo album and then I did things like pockets and I did a little bit of sewing and scrapbook paper and I'll show you in a little bit more detail later when I start embellishing but again on this uh, second signature pretty much the same thing just a little bit of sewing some pockets all different types of paper and this gold trim and I added the gold trim so that it kind of sticks out of the journal like that because I have space in this box here all that space was available to me so that's why I did that oh that's gonna look so cool so now I'm simply going to bind these two signatures into my book made myself a little template so I know where to poke my holes and I'm going to use this template over here to mark where I want my signatures so that everything aligns perfectly I'm going to link a video perhaps up here or down in the description box if you want more details on how to bind using three whole pamphlet stitch so I drew myself two faint lines sort of evenly spaced where I kind of want the signatures to be and I marked where I need to poke the holes using my template just made those markings and now poking the holes and now I can go ahead and wrap this out grabbing my first signature and the template I think I have about 16 pages in this signature you could do like three signatures with 10 pages each for example 
poke those holes. It would be pretty cool if I had gold string to bind my signatures in, but I don't, so I'm just going to use white. And here we go. I'm going to speed this up. And of course, if you don't know how to do a three hole pamphlet stitch, just check out that video that I have linked down below. Utilizing the help of some tools. Tie a knot. And here's a cool thing that I learned recently. Instead of tying knots and having a raised knot bit, you can do this S shape. So one goes here, this one goes here underneath there so you have this s shape and this one goes through this way this one goes through this loop and then you just pull them tight so you have the knots sitting flat next to each other rather than on top of each other i don't know how well you can see that but the knots are kind of next to each other all right perfect no loose signatures and just chop that off signature number one is done and now repeat the same process on signature number two. Here is the middle of my signature number two. I'll show you everything a little bit better. The signatures are bound. There's two signatures. Well, I already said that. And they're evenly spaced here. And everything is nice and tight in there. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do is embellish the journal. And also you'll be able to see all of the types of things that I've already done inside and types of pages and stuff like that. So I have selected just a few little pieces over here and I'm just gonna go for it and probably speed up the process and embellish this journal. And I'm thinking the very first thing that I want to do, create a pocket here for the front. The plan is to keep it simple and I'm only going to use what I have here. So I'm not gonna rummage through stuff. This little thing is going to go in here and maybe I can find something in here. Maybe a little dried flower that can go in there. I'm trying not to overthink it, so here we go. We'll keep it simple. Maybe a little sticker. All right, moving along. So then in here is that album page. Perhaps I can pop in just little bits and pieces. That can go in there too. All right, moving along. And then again on this side, what are we going to do there? Again, little bits and pieces. Maybe I can leave this page as it is. And then over here, we have a pocket. You can see the zigzag stitching, this and this and that. All right, here, this one opens up. So I'm going to pop in a little something in there. I mean, this embellishing business can go on for all eternity. So I'm just going to decorate some pages. And you can see I have all different types of things in here. Maybe I'll glue this down and then pop another little something in there. And then perhaps this little envelope type of thing, we can pop that in there. There we go. Here is a map piece and just plain graph paper and the middle of the signature. Do we want something there? Let's do this. And we can do a little sticker, something like that. And we keep going. This one opens up. So I wanted to create extra writing space. Of course, I'm just using what I have here next to me. Let's get closer. I probably could, you know, add a few more things to my little stash here, but just a bit of glue. And then it can be a little tuck spot for something. And this little round sticker. Okay, that's that page. Keep going, here's a little pocket. I really didn't give myself much stuff, but I know that I can't overfill this journal because the box won't be able to close if it's too full. So I'm just going to stick with flat things. All right, there we have it. That's that one. Again, this opens up. Maybe I'll add more space for writing. This is what we're going to do. All right, moving along. Okay, let's hurry this up, shall we? Just more journaling tags and fun stuff. Maybe I can do a little cluster like this. I'll do this. All right, moving along. And again, more pockets. There's a lot of space in this journal for writing and for tucking stuff in. I'm going to pop that in there and then maybe a little book page in here. Okay, I'm happy with that. 
and that's the end of the first signature now the second signature i might just fill up the pockets all right so i've added some tags in there and i'm going to pop down this sticker and i'm going to call that page done oh my goodness another one what was i thinking i had to go into my stash after all i'm going to pop this in this is from flow magazine and i just had it in my stash so it's perfect for times like these where you have to find something maybe what have we got here does this fit we'll keep that one in there this one opens up perhaps i'll pop this one in there maybe i'll do it this way there we have it there's that one oh and another pocket all right here's what i'll do for that one this is a little piece of something and it's just gonna go in there yes it is and then a little embossed envelope no i'm just gonna leave that in there and embellish it with this simple little piece no i won't it's too big here's another simple little piece this is this is why it's good to have little bits and pieces made up in advance so you can just pull them out of your stash and embellish your journal just a little embellishment okay let's keep going and we're nearing the end i want to use this envelope that i had prepared maybe i can tuck a little something else in there what else do we have this one opens up i'm just gonna leave that as it is we're nearly done this one as well perhaps i can use this dolly i just want to use up all the stuff that i have here on my desk maybe i can pop this in there and then it can be used anywhere in the journal we'll just leave it in there like that oh would you look at that yet another envelope i mean pocket does this fit no that doesn't fit i'm going to put this flower right there, there in the middle and then i'm going to grab all these little pieces here yes and that's what's gonna go into the pocket i'm gonna pop this sticker down here i like how that looks and are we at the end we are nearly at the end move little piece <gasps> look at this this journal is going to end up looking really chunk and i really need it to fit into the box all right that's gonna go in there we'll leave it at that and then over here this looks quite nice i got it in happy mail so hopefully it's going to fit oh it's perfect look at that perfection I might have to leave this one as it is and another pocket what was i thinking with all these pockets okay it's getting chunky but it's still going to work all right another pocket to fill oh this one fits perfectly in here so we will pop that one in there little doggies and i have this box of stuff so that and this one just for fun please no more pockets no more pockets and done okay let's have a look oh look at that chunky monkey oh and you know what i love it and actually it's like perfect it's absolutely perfect thickness now back to the box here we go so we have the box and we have the journal which is going to go in here and the last thing i want to do is something with this what can i do with this so this basically you know helps you pull out the journal there's quite a bit of space in here actually just to pull out the journal but i like it i like this idea so i've never done it before so here we go so now i can either just leave this as it is or i can make it a little bit fun i feel like i wanted to make it a little bit fun so i'm thinking of using this end crimp ribbon uh ribbon end crimp i think it's called you know what i always forget what it's called and people always tell me and then i forget again ribbon and crimp and i don't have a gold one unfortunately i have a bronze one and i don't have one that's wide enough unfortunately but let's just see how it's gonna look if i pop that on there you know it's gonna look fine i want it to kind of go in there so i might have to seal that edge carefully there we go and now that's gonna go on there if i don't like it i can always just chop it off so and that's been successfully crimped on and now of course i need a little something on the edge it has to be something special so this is my box of 
broken jewelry pieces that I've collected over many, many, many years. Oh, look at this. I just picked that up. Hmm. What do you think? Does that make any sense? I don't mind it, actually. I know I don't have much gold stuff. I have these little gold hearts. That could work as well. A little gold heart. Actually, I think I like that a little bit better. I wish I could hear your opinions. Does this look good or does this look good? I'm going to go with the heart. It's a bit more subtle. Do we want subtle, though? No, we do not want subtle. And here we go. That's what I've popped on there. What should I do inside? And I think I left the ribbon too long for this pendant. All right, I had to fix that up. The ribbon was way too long for this. So I just shortened it and then did the whole process again. So now it's perfect. And now I feel like just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to pop something in here. So I'm just going to grab my off cards and punch some little shapes out. I keep all the little off cuts. I know you do too. Don't pretend. Here we go, little hearts. Will they even fit? <gasps> oh my goodness, they're not even gonna fit in there. Yes, they'll fit. I'll make them fit. This one won't fit. Done. <gasps> Woo! And there we have it. Oh, you know what? I absolutely love how this turned out. This is the box and the back is covered. And then of course it opens up here. It's got these little details there. This panel is covered. And then we have the ribbon with the pendant and the little hearts inside. And you pull the ribbon up. And out comes the journal full of beautiful little things, embellishments, and all that sort of fun stuff. I love it. And back into its box it goes. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments down below. I hope it's inspired you. I know you can't go ahead and make the same project that I did because you don't have the same box. You don't have the same embellishments. But I feel like buying those satin pillows was totally worth it because it inspired well the box inspired this project this the box inspired me and i hope the project inspired you please let me know what you think thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye